Hello my friends, Caventia here. With all of the hubbub surrounding the International Aerospace Expo, I missed out on some of the videos that my community seemed to like the most. It's evident that the risky salvage that everyone enjoyed making their millions from has been pretty heavily nerfed. However, I'm going to show you how you can make millions again. That's half a million, 1.3 million, 1.2 million, 1.6 million, 13 and a half K from bounty hunting. Let's get into it. But before we start, I'd recommend getting your hands on one of these little beasties. <laughs> I'd recommend heading over to an L1 Lagrange point, for example, Mick L1, take the internal elevators down to the refinery, head down the staircase on the right into the mining support center, where you can grab yourself the max lift tractor beam for 19k. That'll do. Bounty hunting is all based on rep, and if you go to the ninth icon on your Moby Glass, you'll see that you can build up reputation with the Bounty Hunters Guild. To do that, you'll need to take bounty hunting contracts. Depending which planet you're on, there will be an initial contract, which will give you the right to be able to bounty hunt in that planet's jurisdiction. Blackjack Security for Artcorp, NT Protection Services for Microtech, Hurston Dynamics for Hurston, and Crusader Security for Crusader. The completion of each of these will unlock your ability to fight bounties no matter which planet you're next to in the whole of Stanton. Your goal is to subdue slash kill the target, and whenever you're doing bounty hunting, it's important to get Call to Arms. Call to Arms will give you an AUEC bonus for each enemy you kill, but it's important to make sure that this is not tracked, as it doesn't have a magnifying glass, and that instead you track your bounty. If you're not tracking it, there should be a track button in the bottom right corner. You can use any ship you like for bounty hunting. I did my first few in the new Gatak Sulin. If you want to see that, along with my full review of the Gatak Sulin, I will leave a link in the top right hand corner for you. But for the higher levels, you'll want to be using laser repeaters, not ballistics. This will allow you to soft death your target instead of destroying it and any potentially valuable cargo. It is worth mentioning that right now, you can rent the Drake Corsair for absolutely free. This puts an incredible amount of pilot DPS under your fingertips. Your first contract should be relatively easy, and these will increase in challenge and reward levels as you go up the bounty hunting tiers. Just just remember when you're not damaged to put full power to weapons in order to have an increased number of rounds. If your shields are ever low, make sure you put full power to shields in order to regenerate them. Some of the targets might be a little bit chunky, but as long as you persevere you'll get them. Just like that. And as you rep up, you'll eventually unlock a variety of different bounties. From very low risk targets, to low risk targets, medium risk targets, high risk targets, and eventually very high risk targets and extreme risk targets. Building up reputation in this way can take some time, so if you have a friend, you can always ask them to share their contract with you. Meaning, even if you've just got started, if you have a friend who's into bounty hunting, and they've unlocked their assessment for very high risk targets, if they share that contract with you, then you'll be able to access very high risk targets. By completing higher level bounties, you'll boost your reputation and unlock other contracts yourself more quickly. Just be aware that the contract called Suspect Apprehension Certification for the Bounty Hunters Guild will actually have you tracking down a player. If you're relatively new to bounty hunting, I would suggest avoiding this as it can be a whole nother level of challenge in comparison to fighting NPCs. If you're fighting enemies on the dark side of a planet, it can be a good idea to use your scan ping regularly regularly, and take into account that you only need to kill your primary target. As soon as you've killed your primary target, you can actually run away, there's no need to finish off all of the rest. And if you get damaged along the way, don't be afraid to head over to a mining area or mining outpost in order to repair or restock on missiles. Fortunately, repairs, restocks and refuels have been functioning better in the latest patch. Although generally I find they're more reliable on pads than they are in hangars. By the time you get access to high risk targets and above, you may want to consider bringing along a ship that has a larger cargo capacity. Because some of the larger cargo ships may contain extremely valuable cargo. And don't be ashamed to set your regeneration point at a station close to your bounty target. Our first objective is to take out the biggest threat, which in this case is probably the Cutlasses. One, 
This guy's just not dying. You gotta die now. Finally! Jeez, why I cut you so hard this patch? Okay, then we got a 400i. Looks like he's lost a thruster and he's a sitting duck now. Or a falling duck. There we go! And three. Now the reason I was taking out the smaller bounties first, as opposed to before when we were just going for the primary target for the licenses or for building up our rep is because we wanted to leave this intact so that we could get a good scan on it here we go come on finish the scan ah we're gonna kill him either way let's just kill him i want to be fighting this guy at relatively low altitude we want to try and bring the fight as close to the planet's surface as possible and ideally we want to soft death the ship not full death and the reason we want to kill it as close to the planet's surface as possible is to minimize the chance of it exploding when it touches down. Once your target is soft deft, it will be much easier to scan. That's given me nothing from scan, and I'm basically wiping my nose on it. So let's get landed and see if it actually has any boxes inside. You're kidding me. What a disappointment. On the plus side, by completing that last bounty, it did unlock me my Master Tracker License Certification. Each of the levels before are called Tracker License Certification, and each one will tell you that the license would signify that you're qualified to track and apprehend, and then it will have the level of the risk targets. So this is the highest level, Extreme Risk Targets, or ERT, and so I'm going to see if there are any friends in my org that want to unlock this certification. Some people like to unlock bounties themselves and some people appreciate getting a helping hand. What do you think about sharing higher level certificates with friends? I'd love to hear in the comments below. So I just offered my org mates an opportunity to unlock their own ERTs with me and one of my org mates replied showing that they'd just made about 10 million AUEC from an ERT on their own. So I guess we just got unlucky with that first bounty. So I'll give my org mates an opportunity to respond to my offer while I upgrade my weapons for laser repeaters. Cannons were a little bit painful to use. Generally, for weapons size four or smaller, you want to be using laser repeaters rather than laser cannons as they have a significantly faster projectile speed. So one of my org mates has joined me and so I'm gonna be grabbing the master tracker license which will unlock ERTs for me. Unfortunately, Fortunately, our target is all the way over in Crusader at Yella, but fortunately the star map has actually done a really good job of tracking my journey all the way to my target location. This is a rarity, and I've only noticed it doing this occasionally in the latest patch. How do you mark targets for someone? Alt and a number. Oh, okay. So when I do Alt 1 on a target, all you need to do is press 1 and you'll lock onto that target automatically. Okay. So these set of ERT targets are in an asteroid field around Yella. There's pros and cons of this versus on the ground. The big pro is once you've soft death the ship they're not going to fall towards the ground and potentially crash and destroy themselves and the downside is that you are a bit more likely to crash into an asteroid so you've got to be careful. We've got a hammerhead there on our left and trying to keep out of his firing solution while taking on this Ares. Good job! Okay, our next target, we've got an MSR here, who is desyncing all over the place. That's an awful lot of desync. There we go. Okay, we got him. Okay, now we've got our main target in the hammerhead. This one, uh, this one could be a challenge with us being in such a large ship. This is the most amount of desync I think I've ever had on a bounty. I'm basically trying to remain on its rear in order to maximize the amount of damage we can do to the ship and its rear shields. But it is glitching around quite a lot, making making my job a lot more challenging. I'm sorry we're unable to showcase you the uh, the cleanest, best and most sexy uh, bounty hunting content, but sometimes the servers are like this. I'm just going to try and ride this out and get him dead. He shouldn't have that much health left in him. There we go. We got him. Let's try and get a scan on him if we can. Come on, bounty hammerhead. Let's see what goodies you've got inside. Looks like a full scan with zero goodies. Well, at least we unlocked our ERTs. So I've just accepted a new VHRT, or very high risk target, for Legate Badillo. And with any luck, one of these targets will have an awful lot of salvage on them. 
Okay, our first target is in a Drake Corsair. That could be quite a big threat to us. They have a lot of pilot DPS. Now, normally they're accompanied by some other hostiles. Okay, we got a C2, that's good, and a Taurus. Okay, so each of these ships actually has a decent potential for cargo. The Corsair is the most scary out of these as it has the largest amount of damage, so we're gonna try and deal with that first. We have better shields, but he has more damage. As long as we can stay behind him, we should be fine. Right, we're going to leave him damaged and we're going to try taking out some of the others because we may want to come back with a cargo ship. That one's got a lot of HP. What else we got here? A Taurus. Let's take out the Taurus. I really need to change this MFD. That's better. Just so we can see what's going on with our own ship. Okay, that guy is soft death. That's our primary target. And this one is a target that has a lot of potential for cargo. Okay, this guy is also soft death. Now we can do this one of two ways. We could either kill ourselves now and, oops, which we nearly just did, and then come back and finish this guy off and hope that the other ships don't despawn when we're gone. Or we can finish this guy off, scan all the ships, and if we find out any of them have got lots of stuff on them, then we can get a friend to come and help us pick up and sell. One of the advantages of doing these bounties in a group rather than solo. Okay, we've got this guy too. So that's all three targets soft deathed, and now we go into scanning mode with V and see what they have on board. Let's start with our bounty target. He is empty. Well, that is a disappointment. This is our biggest potential prize. This ship can contain the most cargo and this just has some ultratoxin and some distilled spirits on it. That's, that's not really worth anything. And then we had one more target. There it is. Okay, our last hope. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, good job we didn't backspace. On to ERTs. Horny's nice and close by. Unless you're an experienced pilot, I'd recommend doing ERTs with friends. Although sometimes you can get lucky and have some pretty easy targets, other times you end up with multiple targets with a whole lot of guns pointing your way. But I get how some people might not want others eating into their profits. Okay, we got a Corsair. We got an M2. So Ramiro's in an A2. Okay, that's going to be a big challenge. We'll save him for last. There's also an M2 and a Corsair. Oh dear. Is that two M2s? Oh wow. Ah, got one. Okay, Corsair done. Uh, got two M2s coming after me and an A2. Oh! Okay, so yeah, A2's down, just two M2s now, so I think this is gonna be a cakewalk. It's the big ship ballet. <gasps> oh, oh my goodness. Okay, last target. There we go, last one's dead. Scanning time. Okay, we've got one SCU of Slam, two SCU of Widow, two SCU of Neon, 49 SCU of Altrotoxin, and 146 SCU of ETAM. The ETAM, with that amount of it, and the Altrotoxin, you know, that's that's a bit of money, but we're really after a big haul. So what have we got here? This is the Corsair. Come on, Corsair, what have you got? Scanning tends to work better if you're moving slowly towards the target. So right now I'm decoupled and moving towards it at a speed of 22 and scan seems to work more frequently in that way. A little slam, a little widow, again some altrotoxin and etam, not super valuable stuff. Moving slowly towards the ship, speed of 7 while scanning, a speed of 4, okay, oh. Hold on, that kind of went away. I'm gonna have to check the video to see what that said because for some reason it's disappeared and been replaced with passenger, 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 passenger. One more ship. Okay, that's a target we haven't scanned yet. Tell me your secrets. This one has 218 SCU of Widow. Nice. And 46 SCU of Slam. Very nice. Fortunately, a friend of mine over at Seven Hills decided to help me out. So they are currently parked over at the loot, which gives me an opportunity to come back here, grab my giant tractor beam and a cargo ship and and head back over there.
so many doors. By the way, always leave your engines on in space. It will stop your spaceship from floating away. Drop hatch. New toy. Oh, wow. It's really fast for traversal. This is my first time using this. Okay, that's kind of fun. Oh. Weevil eggs. Now this is super valuable. For anybody who doesn't know gasping weevil eggs, these are the second highest value um, commodity in the game. I, Etam's not bad, but it's not the most valuable, so we're going to prioritize. Slam is worth an awful lot more than Etam. Widow is a pretty good value commodity. Toxin. Distilled spirits. Distilled spirits. Okay. Well, this is absolute junk get yeeted into space and all of that's etam okay so we'll come back to the etam ship at the end if we've got space left this is the one with 218 worth of widow and 46 of slam yeah this is worth getting okay widow this is what we want so you go blow my ship up Let's just squeeze these last ones in. I know we have a little extra space here, but I'm kind of done with the box stacking simulator. So you can stack Widow on Widow. Um, you can stack any item on itself. You just don't want to stack items that are not the same type on top of each other because sometimes you can have sale issues. So we can do this with no problem. I think that's enough for now. Uh, obviously there's some more boxes in here so some more money could be made if you have the patience but I'm quite happy with this haul and I'm gonna go and try and sell it now a lot more people are gonna set their spawn here because it's IAE so I'm thinking I might want to go sell an art corp this time at Samson and Sons salvage center because whenever you're selling you kind of want to make sure you go where people don't go okay we're gonna be scanning on our way in there's a C2 down there on the floor and there is another C2 down there on the floor. Let's uh, slow down, see if we can scan them. Now what we really want to see is that the owner is game rules. Owner game rules, okay? So far, it looks relatively safe. And we've got a nice smooth touchdown. Smoothish touchdown. <laughs> and we're going to take the elevator down as it's safer than opening up the front or the back. Let's try and get this done quick. Doesn't matter if we die as long as we sell first. Looks clear, we got lucky. We're gonna sell the weaver legs first. That's half a million. Then we got slam for 1.3 million. Then we have widow for 1.2 million. A little bit of maze for 90K. Now, unfortunately, we didn't manage to sell all of our Widow. So we have two options. We could fly to another terminal and try and sell, or we could wait it out here. These terminals, I think they reset about every half an hour, but demand is cross-server, so it may take a while. Uh, what? I swear I turned my engines off. This could go really, really badly. I went okay. So we sold the vast majority of our gear, but we've still got some left over. Thing is, if this thing takes off, I can't sell what's on it. I'm gonna try going somewhere else. So we're gonna choose the closest other no questions asked terminal, which is Reclamation and Disposal Orinth on Hurston. And it looks like we're on the sunny side of the planet for a change. Keep scanning on our way in, of course. A2. Oh, A2's a bad news. He can just take off, bomb the place, and then pick up the remains. That is a Scorpius. So this could be controlled by a group right now. Well, he's not reacting or doing anything right now, so let's take our chances. Owner game rules. Good stuff. Hello, Mr. A2. Don't mind me, I'm just, just coming through. <laughs> Do you think this money-making method is popular or something? This could well be occupied and I could get killed here. But sometimes it's fun to live dangerously. So life, I get headshot as soon as I walk out of here. Maybe we get the terminals, good. Try and get the sale done nice and quick. 1.6 million from Widow. Very nice. And then the last one, 13 and a half K. No demand. Really? <laughs> 
Okay, and this is the problem box. It wasn't uh, it wasn't on the grid. And we managed to sell the last one too for 27.17. I will add up all the money we've made and put it on the screen here for your convenience. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry that it's not the millions that we used to make from illegal salvage missions, but as you can see, it's still a viable option of how to make millions of AUEC. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye. By the way, in the Gatek Sulin, I have just realized this. Next to the door open and close switch, you have this component bay. But what I didn't realize is... It also controls the lights. Isn't that cool? Well, that might be useful for you. Red alert. Well, yellow alert, I guess. Is anyone else really disappointed that the cargo centers have the pyro multi-tools and true hold tractor beams, but they don't have the new grey cap max lift? What's up with that? Oh, prospector, I feel bad. Pop. Don't be a criminal in a prospector. Hello, MSR. Oh, wow. This landing pad's crazy. Oh, but if you do come along to Microtech, just be aware that sometimes the trains are acting a little strange. Can I fly through this? I've never tried. Oh, don't be dead. Yes, you can. Okay. Just. Oh, come on. Pick one. Am I in zero G or not in zero G? I just want to know. Just pick one. Just pick one. I'm okay to be in zero G. You want me in zero G? I'll be in zero G. Okay, I'm in zero G. Whew. So let's try and pull myself in. Hooray! I'm getting interdicted. I am being interdicted. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm dead here. Freaking no respawn issue. You're absolutely kidding me. All I did is take off from the fucking hangar.